just been through a traumatic experience. This video was designed to answer some of the questions you may have following a victimization that may affect your health and well-being. You will also learn about your rights as a crime victim and how the police and the criminal justice system can assist you in getting the help you need. In this video, we will cover how important the medical care and services you will receive at the hospital are to your recovery. The assistance you may be eligible for as a victim of a violent crime. Your rights as a crime victim and the benefits of participating in the criminal justice system. Some general reactions that you may have to this stressful or traumatic event. And coping skills to help in your recovery process. The people in this video work with injured crime victims or were crime victims themselves. They wanted to educate victims about what you can expect over the next few days and weeks in your recovery. I understand you injured your uh, leg and then your wrist as well? Yeah, um, the right leg and the right leg and left the wrist. Sure, how, how's that been doing for you? Um, it's, it's feeling better now. Yeah? yeah it's still a little bit sore. Sore? Okay. Right now, while you're in the hospital, you will be receiving treatment for your injuries. Although your injuries are painful, daily reminders of the crime, the scars and pain will improve with time. You may have to do physical exercises to recover from an injury or to relearn motor skills. It can take a lot of hard work and patience. Be easy on yourself and give yourself credit for every step in your recovery. Remember, you're not at fault if you've been the victim of a crime. You deserve the best care possible. It is important you take care of both your physical and mental health. Be sure to go to any follow-up appointments that are scheduled for you. Your successful recovery depends on it. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Your doctors and nurses are here to answer your questions as well as help you heal from your injuries. As a recent crime victim, you may not be aware of the potential benefits of participating in the criminal justice system. You may be eligible to receive financial assistance. The Crime Victim Compensation Fund is set aside by your state government to help pay for unreimbursed expenses that are a direct result of the crime. Money may be available for necessary hospital costs, related medical or dental bills, and mental health counseling that insurance doesn't pay for. It can also pay for lost wages from your job. For some victims, this assistance helps maintain stability and dignity in their lives. It is important that you cooperate with the criminal justice system. This includes police, prosecutors, and crime victim compensation authorities. Promptly complete all paperwork required and let the agencies know if your address changes. Apprehension or conviction of the offender is not required to receive assistance. Compensation applications are generally available in the prosecutor's office or the police department, depending on your state. The application asks for basic information about yourself and the crime. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to call me. Okay. Um, I'd be glad to you know, explain anything to you and how the process works mm -hmm. um, from here. Okay. okay? Okay. Victim advocates generally are available within these agencies to help you complete forms. Once the forms have been completed, send the application and copies of any related medical bills to the address for victims' assistance shown on the form. Compensation, however, does not cover loss or damage of personal property. Crime victim compensation is limited, so not all claims are accepted. You are not eligible for assistance if you were involved in illegal activity at the time of the crime, if you do not cooperate with police regarding the case, if you do not submit the application within the specified deadline, or if the Victim Assistance Agency is not able to contact you for additional information. If you are denied and feel the decision was unfair, you may appeal your case with your state's Crime Victims Assistance Office. Remember, 
Victim advocates are available to help you and to answer your questions. Ask your doctor, nurse, lawyer, or police officer how you can contact a victim advocate. They are taking the perpetrator and they're going to be um, talking with him and, and um, going through some court proceedings that I think you would like to be present for. I think it would be important for you to be present. Okay. Would you be able to be there this afternoon? Uh, yeah, I, I think I can do that. Okay, great. great. Well, As well, a crime victim, really you have the right to protection from intimidation, harassment, and harm. If you feel threatened, call the police and address the situation immediately. Sometimes victims are afraid to participate in the criminal justice system for fear that the perpetrator will get back at them. However, by participating in the criminal justice system, you take control of the situation and protect you and others from future harm. It is also your right to be informed about the criminal justice system. Tell the police or victim advocate if you want to be notified of the accused or convicted person's status, such as the date and time of arrest, release, or escape. You have a right to make a written or oral statement regarding the crime and its effect on you and your family. This is typically called a victim impact statement. A person sustained a bullet wound in the left leg, which required hospitalization. I see. Uh, listen carefully as I tell you your rights uh, for this case. You have a right to an attorney of your choice paid for by you, or you have a right to an attorney appointed by this court if you meet the standards set by this court for the appointment. You also court. have the right to be you present understand? during any bond hearing, trial, and the right to comment during a plea bargain. Take advantage of your rights and get involved in the prosecution of your perpetrator. Most injured crime victims have questions about dealing with the police and the criminal justice system. Here are some legal definitions that may help when discussing your case with the police, prosecutors, or victim's advocate. Grand Jury, a group of individual citizens who review evidence and make a recommendation about whether to bring formal charges against the alleged assailant. Indictment, formal legal charges brought against an alleged assailant handed down by the court after a grand jury hearing. Bond hearing, a court hearing to determine whether bail should be set and the amount of bail for an offender who's been arrested and charged with a crime. We know that crime does not just affect people physically, so in this section, we address some of the emotional reactions you may experience and provide you with coping skills to help you overcome these reactions. When you were injured during the crime, you may have feared you would be killed. This fear is what people often feel in an emergency situation, and our bodies go into an automatic survival mode. Your reactions may have included shortness of breath, dizziness, trembling or shaking, sweating or hot flashes, pain in your chest, rapid heart rate. Don't worry. Many of these reactions are normal responses to a dangerous situation. You may still be experiencing some of these reactions even now in the hospital. Other reactions you may experience over the next few weeks and months include flashbacks, nightmares, or frequent and upsetting thoughts about the incident. To handle all of these, we recommend these four steps. First, don't avoid situations just because of fear or anxiety. If you're avoiding going out of the house or you're avoiding friends and family or if you're avoiding certain places or situations, try to make yourself go out or interact with others a little bit at a time until doing it no longer bothers you. Second, when you experience anxiety, don't use drugs and alcohol to make it easier or to reduce anxiety. Instead, pay attention to situations, feelings, and people that trigger your urges to drink or use drugs and stay away from them. Third, keep busy. Your best weapon against becoming sad or depressed is keeping active. Try to go back to work if possible. If you're unable to work because of your injuries, still try to stay as active as you can. Make yourself get out of bed in the morning, even if you don't feel like you can. 
You might even want to try planning out your day the night before, and then stick to your plan. And lastly, don't blame yourself. The person who hurt you is to blame. You are not responsible for someone else's actions. You are only responsible for your recovery. In closing, remember, you are not alone. There are many people who can help you. We hope this video has provided valuable information to help you through your recovery and in understanding the criminal justice system.